How can I help you? You've seen us catching Dude, online I, predators. What's going on? I just see. Go ahead, just have a seat. Men going after children over the internet. And you send pornographic pictures. But this time we'll show you things you've never seen. Okay. We'll take you behind the scenes of our sting operation. All right, so let me get this straight. So they're talking about a meeting? You'll hear the uncut versions of their story. Do you do this sort of thing all the time? No. Their excuses. Uh, how is this, folks, Sam? I'm the only guy. And we'll show you some moments that shocked and surprised even us. Could you explain yourself? I'm sorry. This is Predator Raw. We rent a house. Our people wire it with hidden cameras and microphones. Volunteers from the uh, online watchdog group Perverted Justice act as decoys, go into chat rooms with a profile that includes a picture that's unmistakably underage, and they sit and wait. And the next thing you know, the guy is knocking on our door, trying to have a sexual liaison with a 12, 13, or 14-year-old boy or girl. What's great about going back to the raw tapes is we can look at things that give us a better idea of how these guys' minds work. Why does a 56-year-old man on his lunch hour walk into a house where he thinks a 13-year-old boy is home alone? What, what, how do you get there? Initially, we looked at it, okay, we'll take some of this from this guy, some of this from that guy, we only have an hour. This is an opportunity to dig a little deeper, to look a little closer, and to understand who these guys are. Fairfax County, Virginia was significant. It was our second investigation. We had a better house, arguably a better location. I was more comfortable. You know, you're always a little bit anxious, but it, it, you know, at least my heart wasn't in my throat the whole time. I could, I could breathe just hours into the investigation. The first visitor came bounding in like he owned the place. I mean, this guy sent photos of himself performing oral sex on another man to somebody he thought was 13. And like so many of the other men who ultimately visited us in Fairfax County, Virginia, this guy was a prominent member of society. The level of comfort we see by watching these guys before I have my interaction says to me they're either very comfortable taking part in this activity or they've done it before or they've spent so much time chatting online with someone they think is a teen that they don't believe there's any danger at all. Now earlier in the chat he had talked about going out to dinner with his girlfriend and then perhaps coming over to meet the boy after that. And just as he finishes that ha 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 he turns around and I walk into the room, and you see this physical reaction on his part. And he knows that his life is about to change. So how can I help you? Go ahead, have a seat. I suggest you sit down. And take your hands out of your pockets, please. What are you doing? Not something good. Why don't you tell me what your plan was? Yeah, I don't want to be. Yeah, this isn't good. Not good? That's kind of an understatement, isn't it? Yeah. Um, can I know who you are, please? I want to know a little bit more about why you were here first. Uh, I'd like to know. Can I say something? Yeah, I'm sure. Now, I don't want to lie to him. But I don't want to let him know I'm Chris Hansen with Dateline NBC just yet. Well, I'm happy to tell you who I am. But I also want to go over some of this chat log with you. It appears from this that you were setting up a meeting with a 13-year-old boy. Okay, you're only 13. Yep, 13. For a 13-year-old, you handle yourself pretty well. Yes, you are very cute, and when boys are that cute, they usually look like their moms. So you pretty much thought you were coming here to meet a 13-year-old boy named Conrad. Yeah, I have a transcript of him. He Do you have anything to say for yourself? I like sucking and being sucked. 
I like to kiss. And now I'm getting ready to ask him what he does for a living. I already know, but I want to hear it from him. What do you do for a living? A rabbi. A rabbi. Now, presumably, you counsel families and children in your position as a rabbi. Sure. Children. What are you doing as a, a man of God, as a rabbi, in this house, yeah. trying to meet a 13-year-old boy? I, I'm really, I, I don't want to do anything that's going to further make you angry. Oh, I'm not angry. Well, you're coming across in a very angry and authoritative sense. I've asked you for identification as to who you are, and you've yet to show it to me. Right now, all that's happened is that I'm sitting in a house. And you sent, somebody. and you sent pornographic pictures through the mail. So, okay, that's a federal offense right there. Look, you know I'm in trouble, and I know I'm in trouble. I am not interested in getting any further. This is not something that I've done. You've never done this before. You know, because I hear that a lot. You see a reaction on his face. And that pretty much seals the deal. He wants to know right then and there who I am. And so I tell him. I don't understand why I can't pass him. I'm more than happy to tell you who I am. I am Chris Hansen with Dateline NBC, and we're doing a story on computer predators. Oh, no. Come on, guy. Don't, don't, you don't want to don't touch anybody. You don't want to... It was really one of the only times, the only time really, where somebody actually physically lunged at me. Now looking back, I really don't think I was in much danger. But you can see how the security system works. Our guy stepped in, took care of it, and defused the situation. You've got to stop this. Sit down. Sit down. You don't have any you're right. Free to, you're free to leave any time. We got phone calls from him for months, and he was downright mean. He blamed us for his situation, and we offered him the chance to do an interview. He initially said yes, but only if we didn't show the video from the house, didn't show his face, or identify what he did for a living, and obviously those were conditions we could not meet. In this investigation, unlike the more recent ones, we did not have police doing a parallel investigation. These guys walked away. We did, however, interviewed the Fairfax County, Virginia police afterwards, and perverted justice supplied police with the chat logs. So ultimately, a lot of these guys were prosecuted. This can be the point in the interview where things get heated. Uh, whoa, 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 whoa. What are you doing? Okay. Then you say, so you won't be shy after a little bit. Uh, whoa, 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 whoa. What are you doing? One of the things about the Dateline investigations is that, uh, you know, we're limited to an hour. And you don't always get to see how these guys, in some cases, really spin a yarn. I mean, a detailed story to try to get themselves out of trouble. This was a guy, Aladdin Shamir, who was pretty clever. He was going to stick with this story to the bitter end. Real fast, okay? How's it going? Good. Good. Why don't you have a seat? Thank you, sir. Nice seeing you. Nice seeing you. How are you, sir? Good, thank you. What you doing here? Uh, just uh, hanging around. Just hanging around? Yeah, I know that the house is for sale. Oh, that this house is for sale? Yes, yes. And what made you thought that this house is for sale? I heard about it, a friend of mine. A friend of yours? Yes. And what's the friend's name? His name is Hisham. And what's his phone number? Uh, he has a cellular phone, 703. 703? Well, why don't I just call him and I can ask him uh, and maybe we can clear all this up. I don't know exactly what's his uh, limits or what is he willing to pay or what location. All right, well, let me call Hisham real quick here. Uh, <clears throat> And uh, what's your name? 
Aladdin. Aladdin. Uh, if it is a wrong number, it will be 3283. 3283. Uh, hopefully, yeah. Okay, well, that first one is Cynthia, it's not Hisham. Okay, so, so let's try the other yes. one. one. 3283. <coughs> I really think I've got this guy figured out. At this point, he's going to start telling the truth. But as you'll see, this isn't over yet. All right, it's Hisham, but uh, he's not picking up his phone. He's not answering? Yeah, I got his phone now. So I just want to get the story straight. Then. Uh -huh. Hisham, your friend, yes. said, hey, I know about this house that's for sale. Yes. And you said, oh, friend, I will go look at it for you. Yes. Out of friendship. Yes. And what would you think of the house? What did you say? What do you it's think of the house? house? Very nice. Yeah. And how many bedrooms for? Four bedrooms. Four bedrooms, uh, two baths? Three baths. Three baths. Yeah. Two full and one half? Yes. Okay. So, Aladdin. Yes, sir. I think now is the time for you to tell the truth. Okay. Why did you really come here? Uh, to see, uh, what's her name? Uh, Sarah. Sarah. Yes. Sometimes, you know, that's all it takes. It's just you call the guy down and, and he comes clean. So all that other stuff about Hisham and the house and all that, that was all a big fat lie. Yes. Okay. Do you know how old Sarah is? No. What is that number right there? What does that say? 12. 12. Okay. She tells you that she's at a summer camp. I got to go to a bonfire. What is bonfire? Bonfire is when you sing around the campfire at a summer camp. You know she's a child. She told me 18, so. Yeah, here it's 12. Yes. 12. You have a nice ass baby, you ask. She says, I don't know, it's behind me. And you say, I'll tease it with... This can be the point in the interview where, you know, things get heated. But uh, I had no idea about what was going to come next. Then you say, so you won't be shy after a little bit. You say, great, good girl. A little bit. Uh, whoa, 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 whoa. What are you doing? Just a little bit. You okay? I am fine, just kind of. I mean, imagine looking at this guy and wondering whether he's faking it or maybe if he's really sick, you know, do I just end the interview and say, you know, why don't you go on? Or do I continue? He said he was okay. We continue. Yes. But does that mean it's right for a 45-year-old man? No, sir. I, and I, 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 for a little while, it goes okay. But, you know, sometimes we can't control these events. Uh. Would you like to leave? No, 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 sir. I just, I'm kind of. Uh, uh, I'm shocked to be honest with you, sir. I lied about myself. I lied, and I'm not that kind of person, sir. Uh, yeah. All right. If you're not feeling well, perhaps you should just go. No, sir. I'm okay. Just I feel bad about myself. Well, before you leave, yes. there's one thing that I need to tell you. Yes. I'm Chris Hansen of Dateline NBC. Okay. And we're doing a story on computer predators. Okay. And if there's anything else you'd like to say, we'd like to hear it. And if not, you're free to leave. Anything against me at the moment? For charges? Yes. No. Not that I'm aware. I do apologize and I promise to be a good man for the future. And I apologize for the lies. I want to just to justify the reason for me to come here. Hello? Yes, it, I called by mistake. I had the wrong number. I apologize. Okay, that's not a problem. Bye. I thought that was Hisham, but it was the other phone number. Okay. It was just a very unusual set of circumstances. I mean, this could be one big act, or the guy could really need medical attention. 
You know, and when you look back at the tapes, when you watch the raw tape, no matter how many times you see it, you still really don't know whether you consider it uh, drama or, or reality. I mean, you just can't make this sort of thing up. He asks you to get uh, panty book. There's talk about beer. There's talk about condoms. You never get used to seeing a teacher. See. What age did Brandon tell you he was? 23, I believe. You want to try again? No, he said he was 23. What's the problem? I have the transcript. That's what the problem is. Brandon said he was 13. 13? 13. We have had, sadly, a number of teachers surface in our investigations, but the very first one was a fellow named Stephen Benoff. And unlike some of the other people who come up with excuses like, I would never really have sex with a child, you know, I came over here because I was curious, he claimed that it was with somebody who was of legal age, not somebody who was 13 or 14 years old. These guys, like Benov, dig themselves into a hole because they spin their whole story not knowing I've read the transcript. So when he says, oh no, I thought he was 23, and I've got the transcript right in black and white where it says otherwise, This guy is roaming around this house, comfortable in a discussion, really about sex. Did you bring the other stuff? Wink, nod, yeah. Turns out the other stuff, condoms. Okay, how are you? Hi, how are you? Good. Would you have a seat over here, please? Sure. What's going on? I don't know. I'm here to see Brandon. What's up? Go ahead, sit down. Yeah. What are you doing here? Well, he invited me over to see him. Who invited you over? Brandon. Brandon. And how old is Brandon? I don't know. Twenties, I think. Twenties? Yeah. Twenties? Mm-hmm. Who are you? What age did Brandon tell you he was? Twenty, twenty-three, I believe. You want to try again? No, he said he was twenty-three. What's the problem? I have the transcript. That's what the problem is. Brandon said he was thirteen. Thirteen? Thirteen. No, no, we didn't. You are crazy for the Nats? Yeah. Meaning the baseball team? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> if you don't see how graphic some of these chats are, th th then there's a tendency to maybe give these guys the benefit of the doubt. Maybe it was his first time. Maybe he was just curious. But when you read the transcripts, top to bottom, you know what the intent was. You know what these guys would be doing had there been a teenager home alone and not Dateline NBC. What are you looking for? A daddy boyfriend. Cool, I'm 48 though. Is that too old for you? You look like a cute guy, but you're an even cuter girl. You like getting in the He says, if you love me, I will. You say it doesn't hurt. And then you go on to talk about oral sex, anal sex, and all the different things that you'd like to do with him. What are you doing here? I obviously made a big mistake. Do you do this sort of thing all the time? No. So this is the first time? Mm hmm You know, I hear a lot of that. Yeah, well, it's true. It's kind of hard to believe. Mm hmm What do you do for a living? I teach school. You teach school? Mm hmm What classes do you teach? Special education. So you're a special education teacher? But he really said he was 23. I'm looking at the transcript, so yeah, it's well. best not to lie, okay? Just tell me the truth. Mm -hmm. You knew he was 13. No. He asks you to get uh, pantyhose. Mm -hmm. There's talk about beer. There's talk about condoms. Did you bring condoms with you? Mm -hmm. You did? Yeah. Set them on the table. What does that say about your intent? Well, I always have them with me, but... 
I understand what you're saying. Intent is critical in proving online solicitation of a minor. So if the decoy says, bring this or bring that, whether it's beer or condoms, and the potential predator brings the items, it shows intent. So when Stephen Benoff pulls those condoms out of his pocket and puts them on the table, that's evidence. I mean, who, who shows up at a home where a 13-year-old boy is alone with condoms? Who does that, and why do they do it? Can you tell me who you are? I'm Chris Hansen with Dateline NBC, and we're doing a story on computer predators. And if there's anything else you'd like to say, we'd like to hear it. You never get used to seeing a teacher surface in one of these investigations, but the very first time, I mean, I was just shaking my head. It's like, how could somebody involved in educating kids, in this case, special education kids, you know, even his screening, crazy for the Nats, meaning the Nationals, the baseball team, would indicate that he's just a regular guy, you know, teacher taking the summer off, 50-some years old, going to baseball games. But here he is inside this house after a graphic chat, attempting to meet a teenage boy home alone for sex. I mean, it was mind-boggling to me. It wouldn't be the first time, but I didn't know it when I saw it. Oh, only guy. You talk about sex acts with a dog. You talk about sex acts with a dog. It's one of the reasons why I'm trying to get help because I've gotten into fetishes that I, that I know aren't right. And I'm trying to cut all that. I really am. I have a psychiatrist I'm seeing now. Joe Wonderler was a guy who clearly had a problem. I mean, this guy actually wanted to involve a dog in the sex act with a young girl. And he was very graphic about how he wanted this whole process to go. And you even see him when he comes in, you know, sort of reference to himself, where's the dog? You see him mouth those words. He's anxious, he's nervous. He's got kind of a, a tick going on when we talk to him because of all this stress that he's under. But uh, I think a part of him was relieved that he was finally gonna get some help. What's that? I got, I got a skirt I'm gonna put on. Can you just be at the counter for a second? Huh? Thanks. How you doing? How you doing? Why don't you have a seat right around the school? I'm just... Go ahead, just have a seat. <clears throat> What's happening? How much? What are you here for? <laughs> just come and talk to him. Come and talk to him? That's it. What's that? You seem a little nervous. Yeah, I am. Why are you so nervous? I just get nervous. I was just coming to talk, talk to somebody, that's all. Talk to who? I was coming to talk to Aaron. Aaron? Yes. And why were you going to talk to Aaron? Just talk, that's all. Nothing more. How old is Aaron? She didn't tell me. Try again. I saw, I saw 14, but she, I mean, I didn't know. I'll try one more time. Watch her, just keep your hands out of your pockets. Right? Okay. She says, how about you date a 12-year-old girl? If I really like her and her parents don't want a gun or a pitch for her, I never wrote that. Well, I have it right here. I have a transcript. Right Can I see the... Well, I'm not done with it. In the early investigations, you know, we didn't have it down to a system like we do now. We'd still get caught uh, with either the wrong transcript or perhaps an incomplete transcript of the man's chat with the decoy. I was looking for the passage where he was specific, and Dell from Perverted Justice slides in, hands it to me, so I was able to actually confront him. My bad. So you thought it was okay to come here to see a 14-year-old girl why? No, I didn't. You talk about hair in personal places. Then you say, and there was just something, watch your hand, I want to see your hand. I'm sorry. 
And you say there is just something about a teen body. And you say, so are you a thong kind of girl? My mom won't let me have it. That sucks. Bet you would look awesome in it. I know what was in there, and I was talking. I mean, we were talking. That was it. I wasn't planning on doing that. I was just talking. It was just a conversation. There's a lot of talk here. <clears throat> would you ever try anal? Ouch, that sounded like it could hurt. Not have done right. You have to be very gentle with that. Quite a Romeo. I'm... I'm the only guy, what can I say? This gets pretty freaky here. Listen, I have had a problem with an internet addiction talking with the females. I've never done anything with the females that I've talked to. I just, you know, meet and talk, that's it. I've never done anything. I'm trying to get help with it. What are you doing to get help? I'm seeing a, a psychiatrist right now. Well, it doesn't look like it's working too well based upon all that. I just started talking to him. Wonderler tries to tell me that while he recognizes he's got an addiction, perhaps a compulsion, it's limited to chat. He would never actually do these things in person. But he's so specific in the chat. He, he is very graphic in the details of what he wants this girl to do with a dog and then what he's going to do to the girl. And if it was all just talk, then you know what was he doing sitting in our kitchen? You talk about sex acts with a dog. It's one of the reasons why I'm trying to get help because I got into fetishes that I, that I know aren't right. And I'm trying to cut all that. I really am. I have a psychiatrist I'm seeing now. It was just talk, that's all. There's a lot of talk here. I mean, how can you talk this way to a 14-year-old girl? That's why I'm getting help. I have a problem. I guess you're going to tell me next that this is the very first time you've done something like this. Actually, it is. I'm serious. How do you expect me to believe that? You know, I hear that all the time. I know you do. I know you do. And I mean... I know what you guys are doing, and I I understand, and I see where you guys are coming from. It sounds like what you're saying is, okay, 14-year-old girl, it's okay to have sex with me. In fact, I've done it before. I was just talking. That was it. How old are you? 28. 28. Mm -hmm. And you think it's appropriate to visit a 14-year-old girl home alone? Why? Even if you were just visiting to talk. Mm -hmm. I didn't think about it. I honestly didn't. How do you think a 14-year-old girl's parent would feel about that? Infuriated. I know I would if I was a parent. Yet you did it. I was just talking. I wasn't going to do nothing. Yeah, I know. But what's in here is mm -hmm. sex act after sex act after sex act. Talk of mm -hmm. sex with multiple people. Talk of stuff that's way out there, it's, quite frankly. It's, dogs. It's just talk. That was all. People do it all the time online. I know, but there's a difference between doing it online and showing up at a house. I know what you guys are doing. I see it all the time. And I and I think it's great what you guys are doing. I really do. And, I mean, I will do anything. I will do anything to help you guys out with stuff like this. This was only our second investigation. So when Joe Wunderler says, I like what you guys are doing, I believe in it, I want to help, I'm thinking he, he believes we're the police. So my impression was that he was offering to cooperate in another police investigation. He would help us in any way he could to catch other predators if we'd cut him some slack or perhaps even let him off the hook. I was wrong for doing what I did. I know that. I would do anything to help you guys out. Well, what should happen to you? Honestly, I'd like to be able to give, be given a chance to help you guys out any way I can. What can you do to help us out? anything that you suggest well I'm not a policeman I'm Chris Hansen of Dayline NBC we're doing a story on computer records I'm free to leave right now if there's anything else you want to say we're happy to hear it but if you care to leave you're welcome to leave I like to leave this is a case where what he wanted to do to this girl was above and beyond a lot of the other things we see, uh, the other chats, the other things that these men say online. Um, was he sincere? 
difficult to tell. You know, I, I hear this, I'm going to get help, I need help, over and over again. It's probably true. But this was one of the more graphic and bizarre chats we had seen up until that point and, and really ranks right up there uh, even now. Could you explain yourself? I'm sorry. And I said, can you believe this? Go ahead and cover up. You're going to tell me you've never done this before? No, sir. So you just woke up this morning and said, I'm going to get involved in an internet conversation with a 14-year-old boy. I'm going to go to his house, strip naked, and walk in with a 12-pack of beer. This was just something you thunk up today. No, sir. I'm not going to talk to him about it online. John Cannell is a guy who in an online chat with someone he thought was a young teenage boy, said that he was a teacher at a prestigious high school in Virginia. The chat is graphic. At one point, the decoy said something about, you know, what would be really hot, strip down your underwear in the garage and walk in. Canali says in the chat, I don't wear underwear. Decoy says something to the effect of, well, you know, come in how you are. And we really didn't think he was going to do it. Uh, this is our second investigation, and while we'd seen some surprising things, you know, who's going to walk into a stranger's house naked? Well, Could you explain yourself? I'm sorry. Should... Go ahead and cover up. Certainly. I'm sorry. What's going on here? Yes, your son I am to me. And he told me to come on over. He I am you? Yes, sir. You can sit down. How did he know to I am you? I don't know, sir, honest. So he just chose you out of the blue and said, come on over, get naked, and walk into the kitchen. Well, I sat there talking to him for a little bit, yes. And what did you guys talk about? We were just talking about anything, sir. How old are you? I'm 29, sir. 29. And what do you do for a living? I drive a school bus. You drive a school bus? Yes, sir. And you thought it was appropriate to walk into the home of a 14-year-old boy who you thought was alone, buck naked? What was your plan? I don't know, sir. What's your full name? John Kennelly. And you're a school bus driver or a teacher? Teacher. You're a teacher. I'm going to need to see some ID. I left that at home, so I'm sorry. I, I'd like to see some ID. Turned out later that he was neither a teacher nor a bus driver. In fact, he was unemployed and had been for some time. What kind of conduct is this for a high school teacher? No, sir, I've never done this before. You're going to tell me you've never done this before? No, sir. So you just woke up this morning and said, I'm going to get involved in an internet conversation with a 14-year-old boy. I'm going to go to his house, strip naked, and walk in with a 12-pack of beer. This was just something you thunk up today. No, sir. I'm not going to talk to him about it online. Do you see how this looks, John? Yes, sir. Let me just see the driver's license. I'm sorry, sir. I'm sorry. It doesn't hurt. What am I, what, what would have happened? What would have happened, John, if I wasn't here? I probably would have chickened out, sir. Chickened out? Do you see why that is hard for me to believe? I do, sir, but it's the truth. You say to him, are you straight, bi, or gay? He says, gay. I just don't tell anyone. You say, sweet, I won't, I promise. You say, you are so effing hot, bro. I want to be your boyfriend if you will have me. I'm serious. I was just chatting. I was just... Chatting, you're sitting in this kitchen naked, John. That's a step beyond chatting, isn't it? Yes, sir. What are you? I don't want to get you in trouble, bro. I also don't want to get me in trouble either. You knew this was wrong when you walked in. Yes, sir. I think I can learn real fast to love you. Fourteen years old. 
Do you know that it's illegal to have a conversation on the internet with the intent to have sex with a minor? Yes, sir, I do. So you came here knowingly violating the law? Kennelly was significant because not only did he admit what he was doing was wrong, he also admits that he knew it was illegal, and he showed up anyway. What do you think should happen to you? I don't know, sir. Well, there's something you gotta know. I am not the father of the boy, but I am Chris Hansen of Dateline NBC, and we're doing a story on computer predators. Anything else you'd like to say to us? We'd like to hear it. If not, you're free to leave. Thank you. You can take the towel to the garage and get dressed. He sees the camera. He's trying to keep the towel up around him. He's trying to grab his clothes and head out the door. And he gets his underwear on and just beelines to get out of there. If he had just left it at that, you know, Kennelly would have been a memorable character. But what he did the next day, just put him over the top. Less than 24 hours later, he's back in a chat. I have been in television for 24 years. I just came to get something to eat. John. So, wait a minute, so let me get this straight. So they're talking about a meeting? Nobody has ever gone through what that man went through when he got to this house. But now this is just amazing. This guy leaves our house, shirtless, holding most of his clothes. And less than 24 hours later, there he is in a chat room trying to make a date with another young teenage boy. We couldn't believe it, but it was the same screen name, same everything. So the decoy made a date, and they agreed to meet at a nearby fast food restaurant. We move into position, he walks out of the restaurant, and we're there waiting for him. I remember exactly what I said. I have been in television for 24 years. I just came to get something to eat. And I have very seldom been at a loss for words. Sir, I just came but to get something to eat. But I don't even know what to ask you first. I just came to get something to eat. John, we've been through this before. What are you doing? I've got the chat log again. You're chatting up another 13-year-old kid, and you're going to meet him here at McDonald's. You identify yourself, you call yourself Shane this time. You ask him a series of personal sexual questions. Is that appropriate talk to be having with someone you think is a 13-year-old boy? No. Last night, you walked into a home naked, hoping to meet a 13-year-old boy. You said you were sorry. It was the first time you'd ever done it. You admitted it was wrong. Yes, I did. You left. Yes, I did, sir. And within 24 hours, you're back on the internet chatting up another 13-year-old kid? What is going on? What do you have to say for yourself? I, I don't have anything to say for myself. Well, you should say something, don't you think? I, I mean, what, 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 are, what are we to think you're going to do next? Last night, you walk into a house in suburban Washington, naked with a 12-pack of beer, hoping to meet a 13-year-old boy. Yes or no? Yes. Okay. Today, you're on the internet again. You have an inappropriate conversation with a boy you think is 13, and you set up a meeting here at this fast food restaurant. What was your intention? I don't know. Don't you think you need some help? I'm seeing a psychiatrist. Do you see why I was skeptical last night when you said... Can you get those No, off? I can't, John. I can't do that. That's their job, is to record video and audio. Now, you put yourself in this position. So don't get tough with that. Do you see why I was skeptical last night when you said it was the very first time you'd ever done something like that? It was, though. Oh, I... How can I believe that? And how do we know that you're not gonna go out tomorrow or the next day or the next day or the next day and do this again? I promise you I won't. You see something so extreme, a guy show up naked and then come back the next day. You realize and you get a better understanding of how strong these addictions, these compulsions can be. 
and they develop online. First, perhaps porn sites, chat rooms, but ultimately that isn't enough to satisfy some of these guys. And that's when you see them, I think, take these extreme measures and, and risk so much to actually have a face-to-face -face meeting. What are you gonna do? I'm gonna call my psychiatrist. How long have you been seeing a psychiatrist? A little over a year. A little over a year? And why were you seeing? Because I had a family breakdown. Meaning what exactly? I had a death in my family. And I couldn't, and I never handled it well. And is that what you attribute this sort of behavior to? I'm guessing, yeah. That sounds like a cop. But it's not the... What happens if you really did meet a 13-year-old boy? What happens? I don't know. I don't know? It's illegal to have a talk on the internet with a minor with intent to have sex with that minor. You've done it twice in two days that we know of. That's a federal offense. You can go to prison for it. Do you know that? Yes. Then why do you do it? That I need help, and that's what I'm seeing a psychiatrist for. And you're gonna find help here at McDonald's? No. You're gonna find help from a 13-year-old boy? No. Experts in the field, after hearing all this, are gonna likely suggest that last night wasn't your first time, and today isn't your second time, that you've been doing this for a very long time, John. No, I haven't. Do you understand why that's hard for me to believe? I mean, is there any reason for us to think that you won't just go ahead and do this again tomorrow? I got two appointments with my psychiatrist tomorrow. What about today? You don't seem that busy today. That's why I'm gonna go home and call him. You consider yourself a predator? I don't know. You don't know? Is there anything else you wanna say? No, sir. And he walks off, shoes untied, gets into his pickup truck, and drives off. And I'm thinking, I, I just can't believe what I've just seen. When we started these investigations, you know, the goal was to understand what goes on in these guys' minds that makes them think it's okay to show up at a house where a young teen is alone and try to have a sexual relationship. After you talk to a guy like Canelli, you have a better understanding of the addictive nature uh, of the internet and of the compulsion some of these guys develop. But it also makes you wonder how you deal with a guy like that. And so while it answers some questions, it often raises more.